happen. And so it becomes this like scare tactic thing. Mm -hmm. You don't see the classics talking about how bad it is. Mm -hmm. And if the classics aren't talking about it, then you have to really analyze, is it that bad? Okay, that's out. Did, is Mary's thing passed out? No, no, I can pass it out. Would it, mm, would it mm. depend on, on whether Saturn, you're in Saturn Dasha, and whether Saturn is uh, uh, a good planet for you or a bad planet for you? Wouldn't it depend on those things? In the overall reality, it depends on how good you live life and how good your karma is. Saturn is our sin. Did you read this, Umesh? I was just writing on this the other day on Tribe. Thank you, Mary. Yeah? Saturn is the Karaka of the 6th and 8th house. Are you recording this? No. Saturn is the Karaka of the 6th and 8th house. 6th house is the house of Shadrapu. It's our sins against ourself, our bad habits. Smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, um, drinking wine, being jealous, stealing, um, overeating, all these things that you do that are bad for you are sixth house. Eighth house, just like the ninth house is your purvapunya, the good karma from your last life, the eighth house is the bad karma from your last life. So it's all the bad things that you've done to other people. Saturn is karaka, these two houses. Because Saturn is that. He's all the bad stuff you do against yourself, all the bad stuff you do against other people. He's, the Sanskrit word is papa. It means, you know, some people translate it as sin. And what is sin? You know, that's the, the Christian concept of sin is a little demented, but, you know, papa, it's it, the best word that I've seen it translated as. You could say it's bad karma, but, or you could say it's sin. So Saturn is just your sin. He's just your bad karma. He's the bad, he's showing the bad things that you did to yourself and to other people. So when he goes through your lugna, when he goes over your moon, he's just giving you the results of all the bad stuff you've done. So if you end up being in a Saturn Dasha when it goes over there, then it's showing that you have done more negative karma. You know, all of a sudden it's a time of getting your bad karma and the planet of bad karma goes to sit over your mind. So it's, it's, you know, if you've lived a pure, very sophic, good life, then it's, it can't do anything to you. And of course, there's the indications of that in the chart. And we begin to interpret that. And how do we know whether the person has lived a good life? How do we know they lived a good life last life? How do we know that they didn't lie, cheat, or steal and weren't jealous of anybody? Saturn. It could actually do good to you also, right? It's a sign of both good and bad karma. I mean, that's a, a Western concept that, you know, Saturn's not that bad. It's a very Western concept. Like, oh, Saturn's not that bad. You know, you don't be too afraid of him. I say don't be afraid of him. He's, it's only your own bad karma that you've done. So you could... S On that level, you know, of Sati Sati. You could say, say you're suffering a lot, right? You could say, okay, there's a lot of burning of my bad karmas going on, being purified of my sins. You know... Some people say burning of bad karma if you're suffering. But the thing is, if you're really burning bad karma, it, to truly burn bad karma means you're sitting doing tapasya and the inner agni is burning up and you're purifying your mind with mantras in the proper sadhana and you're burning up the negative tendencies that attach you to your bad karma. You've burned up that negative tendency and become so... You know, you've, you, you know you, maybe you lied to somebody and caused something bad to happen. By doing a strong sadhana of the sun, you burn up any aspect of yourself to lie. And you just you begin speaking only truth. You burned up that karma to, that, to lying to somebody and causing something. Now, if all of the, you lied to somebody... And then all of a sudden somebody lies to you and you get a bad car and you're suffering because your car is no good and you just waste it $2,000. It's not really burning up karma, it's experiencing bad karma. So burning up your bad karma or experiencing your bad karma, I differentiate the two. Okay. Because if you burn it up, you shouldn't be experiencing it. Okay. Experiencing it, if you're suffering, that means you're eating your bad karma. 
Okay. Sounds like a little less efficient way of uh, discharging the bad karma. I mean, it's got to it's got to go somewhere. I mean, it's not going to stick around forever. I mean, things life changes. Life changes, um, but I mean, but the thing is, not everybody's going to do sadhana. I mean, most of the people out there are just experiencing pain and suffering. Just remember, sadhana. One way to do sadhana is to, you know, you for Saturn. The best remedy for Saturn is sun. Because sun is that which burns your bad karma, sun. And so you could sit there and you could do Gayatri mantra so many times with all the proper rituals, and start burning up your bad karma there. But then what really happens when you're doing the Gayatri Mantra doing that? Is it the Gayatri Mantra that's actually doing it? Or is it what's happening inside of you be, that the Gayatri Mantra is doing to you that's burning up the bad karma? If you just take an oath to, to, never, to never lie, or if you just take an oath to never do, you know, to never cheat, or to never, if you just, you know, and you just start living a certain way, if you start doing karma yoga to benefit people, you're, you're activating your solar energy. So maybe the person can't sit there and do a mantra type sadhana. But if they can live in the energetic of the sun, if they can bring that solar energy into their life, and not by wearing a copper ring, or putting on an iron ring to protect them from Saturn. I mean, what's that going to do for your karma? But to actually live in a way, the sun is, is the king. The sun represents dharma. Mm -hmm. To go out and start promoting dharma in the world, not by just saying dharma, but by doing dharma, being an example of dharma, promoting dharma and, and increasing dharma. You know, going to a school and helping kids like, the, you know, by promoting dharma. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyway, you know, the, the yoga thing I'm about to do, there's a lot of people that are addicted to all kinds of drugs and alcohol and things like that. And the only thing that keeps me going back to it is because every, there's like maybe every year there's two or three people who I'm, I just look at and I'm like, is that, is that you? And the guy's like, yeah. You know, I stop drinking and I just do yoga every day. And I'm just like, you know, the guy's got it, you know, he, he just, from what, you know, the difference, it's incredible. And that, just by that, that's, that's, that's promoting dharma. So that's a remedy to the sun. So just, you know, when I say sadhana, I'm talking, when, as a jyotishis, sadhana is a very big reality consciousness. We have to understand the energy of that planet and the multiple ways to activate that planet. Like just as a way to activate the um, sun and trines. You know, sun rules playing instruments. Playing an instrument activates the sun in your trines of the Vamsha. So it's not a mantra that's doing it. It's, you know, we just, okay, so, you know, moon and trines is singing. So if you start singing, you'll start activating that moon. So when somebody has an Ishta Devata in their Vamsha Lagna, I tell them to sing. I don't tell them to go sit there and worship Krishna. If they sing, they'll activate that moon and the Ishta will guide them. If it's sun ishta sitting in the trines of Navamsha, I tell them to play an instrument, and that sun will get activated and will guide them. So, you know, we have to understand what it all means and start applying it in a real utilitarian, practical way. Sadi Sakti. <laughs>